And you know, that's really where the where the movie begins. We're introduced to the 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 rain soaked Pacific Northwest of the late nineteenth, early twentieth century, and uh, welcome to the town of Presbyterian Church, Washington, a burgeoning mine community full of good cheer and good people. And now, listener, uh, if you are not a fan of the music of Leonard Cohen, then buddy, turn back now. Because <laughs> yeah. even the action scenes are when something crazy is happening. Yeah. Here comes, yeah. here comes Leonard first, Cohen. The first time I saw this movie, I distinctly remember um, rewinding in the first scene and shazamming it. Because I, I was like 13 or something and didn't know who Leonard Cohen was. And I was like, whoa, this is like the most, this is the deepest song I've ever heard in yeah, my life. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Just some Joseph looking for a manger? What? And it still goes Holy so shit. hard. <laughs> yeah. And just, I, love how you know, all it, I love how all the songs... Is, I mean, this is just Leonard Cohen, where he's just like, hey, you know she's not your lady, but you do just want to see her, and she <laughs> gives you all kinds of stuff, and you know that she <laughs> won't love you. It's just like... just It's all about just... All of his songs are just about like, this lady's so fucking hot, and I love having sex yeah. with her. But I know she won't want to be with me. This lady's a fucking smoke show, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a highway in a lot of ways, if you think about it. I always think... Uh, this lady's so hot, she's like Jesus' mother, but I'm just the guy who's traveling with her, but I'm not the father of, of our Lord and Savior. I just, I just want to have sex with Julie Christie. And, you know, like, uh, that, that's kind of what McCabe and Miss Miller is about. It stars Warren Beatty as uh, McCabe. And that's the funny thing about McCabe is that's not even his name. We don't even really know what Warren Beatty's character's name is. He just arrived in Presbyterian Church. And in the, uh, you know, uh, in, in the ultimate-esque bit of uh, overlapping conversations and sort of this, like, game of telephone among these among the local yokels, they're just like, hey, who's that guy? And then someone's like, I th oh, it's McCabe, the, the gunfighter. And he just has, out of nowhere, he just has this big rep. And he's like, oh, like, you know. Well, I'm, he I'm, shot Bill just, Roundtree. <laughs> yeah, he shot There's Bill like, Roundtree. That's Pudgy McCabe. I think he <laughs> says in the movie, he's like, I think in the movie he does say, it's, my name's John. Like, it's John yeah. McCabe. Because he says, like, he's trying to deny, he, like, denies that he's Pudgy. And, like, you wouldn't think that he's a gunslinger or anything. We'll talk about that later because there's a scene later on that's really funny. That's my favorite scene in the movie when um, it's the saddest scene, I think. To It's like him at his lowest, I think, in the entire movie <laughs> because, um, well, he like, he rolls into town and the he's first scene... He's 5% smarter than everyone else. Yeah. So he's automatically yeah, he's the, the smartest man in yeah. town. <laughs> I, 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 have him, I have him in my notes here. It's, uh, it's, it's McCabe, <laughs> the, the stranger who comes to town and he's the guy with the cool fur coat the good cigars, oh, citified <laughs> clothes, which pretty much puts him in the running for the smartest, swaggiest man anyone in this absolutely primitive shithole has ever encountered. He's, he's, it's not even so much that he's smarter than everyone. He is. He is smarter than everyone there. But he just has so much. He's just so swagged. And he's dripping with charisma. He gets his red velvet tablecloth to play cards yeah, yeah. he's he's so these guys, like, have been, these guys have been playing poker on like mud yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> until mccabe comes to town Does he shows them, like he, betting he, for pebbles and rocks he orders a bottle he orders yeah. a bottle from sheehan the, the like the barkeep the guy who owns the pub or like the tavern restaurant he's basically like um sheehan tell you what you put one coat of white paint on this fence and give me a bottle that we'll split. And then uh, he's like, oh, okay, sounds good, Mr. McCabe. And, and like, I, I really want to talk about like this opening scene where McCabe comes to town and, and starts up a card game at uh, Sheehan's. Sheehan played by the great Rene Aubergenois, uh, sort of like a, 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 a stock character in Altman's stable of weird guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was in MASH. He's the he's actually plays Julie Christie's husband Star in Trek. images, and, and then of course he he, I will, he will always be Odo from Deep Space Nine for me, but yeah like and, and just like just personally for me McCabe and Miss, Mrs Miller I also saw it when I was about thirteen years old, and this movie really holds like it's one of those movies that like its its import in my life is magnified so greatly because it's a movie that I associate with my dad so much because it was a movie that he put me on to. And, 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 and at that age when I was like, he decided that I was old enough to start seeing like serious R-rated movies and he showed me, you know, the Goodfellas and the Godfather and then McCabe and Mrs. Miller was really like the, the outlier because it's so unconventional and I didn't quite know what to make of it when I first saw it but by the end of it, God, it just, it sunk, its, it, it just, it sunk itself so deep into me and it stayed with me my entire life. So I'm, I'm 
thrilled to share it with uh, everyone on Movie Mindset now. But like, let's talk about the opening scene where he, he shows up at uh, Sheehan's, which is like the it's the the bar, restaurant, hotel, and livery. It's it's everything for this town. And what I think is so amazing about it is that like. The first scene is so muddy, and I mean that in like like in, in in the sort of brown color palette, the darkness of it, but also the muddiness and how convoluted the action is. It's just like it doesn't cohere to anything. It's 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 protean. It's this like uh, mm -hmm. and the visual space, too. yeah. They, yeah, they exactly. put like um, a filter on the lens and they like flash the film negative so that it's like you lose a bunch of detail. It's like it's it feels like it's filmed on a daguerreotype, like somehow. <laughs> Well, Altman said himself that he called this movie an anti-Western because he didn't want it to feel like a Western. And he does a pretty good job because he's like, oh, I'm going to make the setting not the desert or Utah or wherever, Oklahoma. It's going to be Monument Valley, yeah. right up in Washington along the coast where it's just always raining or snowing, just like the mm -hmm. wettest place you could possibly be. And it's so sick for it. Like it looks so yeah. different from every other Western besides like, I don't know, the great, the great silence or something, but another outlier. Yeah. And I really also think like uh, the, the TV show Deadwood is very, very indebted to McCabe and Miss Miller because it, you know, it, it also portrays this kind of like primitive proto America, like almost like America before America existed literally in Deadwood. But it also very much is about like the sort of like uh, the social body and like how like the, the the individual constituents of this community, like how it's just sort of how community and how a nation itself is formed. And then in this kind of like new Hollywood milieu of like Altman is this very like subversive filmmaker. Like you said, Andrew, the, the character of McCabe is sort of the anti John Wayne of the Western hero who only has a rep as a gunfighter, but is actually like as, as, as one of the characters said, says later in the movie that man's never killed anyone in his life. <laughs> yeah. he, and he's just this half smart pimp who comes to town with like, you know, the modest dream of selling women. <laughs> Literally a pimp. Literally yeah. and figuratively a pimp. <laughs> like. I realized this last night. He reminds me of, um, why well, it should be the other, it's the other way around, I guess. But, George Clooney in Oh Brother Where Art Thou, who's just a liar, like a fake lawyer. And he tries to talk, <laughs> yeah. he talks, he talks just like this. He talks all smart. He, wears, he uses big, fancy words. And like McCabe <laughs> talks the same way, where he's just like, he's very determined. And he, he presents himself as being smart. And he might have a few, you know, expensive Tricks words. Up the yeah. And yeah. people are like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Because there are a bunch of like Irish dolts in the hills who don't know how to do anything. <laughs> they are, they, everyone in the town of Presbyterian Church is an NPC. And yeah. Hessa, I, I, I saw you earlier this morning. I loved your idea for a McCabe and Mrs. Miller like paradox video game called yeah. Whorehouse Tycoon. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, oh, um, Madam Bovary is encroaching on your territory. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to like, spread uh, the clap at her establishment? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> or like, you know, you can like, uh, you, you pull out like, uh, you pull out like his, um, his, his one-liners to advance the dialogue tree. Like, you, you got to, what, what's the matter, Sheehan? You got a turd in your pocket or something? He goes, listen, if a, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bounce his ass so much. And I, I just, I just love all of the McCabe-isms where he just comes in and starts spitting all this game and like glad-handing and wheeling and dealing <laughs> and all these all these absolute oafs are just so seduced by him immediately. They're all just like, oh, we want to play cards with McCabe. He's the coolest guy we've ever met. Wait, buy some whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back then, that's like, I mean, that's still like what, what people just want to do is just hang out and drink. Back then, that was definitely the only thing to do. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. Like, when, when he first walks into Sheehan's place, this is just like a, the full uh, episode, just a vision of what everyone in like the late 19th, early 20th century was house. doing on a Friday night, which is like, Sitting in a room with a with a dirt floor, one light, uh, st staring at Doing each other. Nothing. Like maybe, maybe some guy would be playing a fiddle in the background, and like, yeah. but that's what's so funny about all the overlapping dialogue is like these little snippets of conversation that you see among these guys, like the two guys who are like talking about should I get a haircut or not. Yeah, like what you? I then you see a later. What do you have? Then, <laughs> you, like, then there's a scene where he shaves. For the full he's episode, just got a mustache. subscribe kind of at patreon.com/slash like, Chapo Trap House. And they're like, they're like, he's like, do you notice anything different? And they're like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like that's what did, like that was the only thing to talk about, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Get a mail order bride, you know? Maybe. Yeah, oh my god. god. The mail well, order yeah, we'll bride. We'll talk about it part. like. And, and, the the introduction of women into this like totally homosocial world is also for the really full episode. Subscribe like, at patreon.com/chapotraphouse. 
trap house.